Hello and welcome back. In this section, we will focus on routing and failover configuration between all three ISP interfaces in the PFSEN firewall. Go to the system, click on routing, click on gateway groups, click on add, create groups for ISP1, ISP2 and ISP3. In my situation, I would type the group name ISP failover and line up certain ISPs for failover and for load balancing purposes which splits traffic across connections for efficiency. Let's say ISP1 set to tier 1. This will be our primary internet connection and ISP2 to tier 2. This is a secondary connection. If tier 1 fails, then it's automatically switched to tier 2 and ISP3 to tier 3. And trigger level, I should set it to high latency. When any ISPs got high delay in the internet, then switch to ISP2 and then ISP3 and then back and forth according to their tier level. Now click on save and then apply changes. In the routing, we have another settings which we have to focus on. Click on gateways and in the default gateway IPv4, either select automatic or select the ISP failover. If you are not using default gateway for IPv6, set it to none and click on save. Now apply this group in the firewall rules to control how traffic flows between LAN and WAN interfaces. Go to the firewall, click on rules. In the LAN interface, I am not going to add any specific rule, rather editing existing rule for IPv4, click on edit. Scroll down, click on display advanced. And in the gateway, select ISP failover routing group which we have created earlier. Then click on save and click on apply changes and there you go your pfsense firewall is now fully configured with all four NICs handling LAN traffic static isp dynamic isp and ppp oe isp traffic you have got a robust setup ready to manage failover load balancing and secure connectivity now verify that the pfsense firewall can access the internet through each isp by pinging external ips open the command prompt and type ping space 8888 and yes internet is working now check the dns resolution type ping space yahoo.com and our dns resolution is also working fine now verify the configuration in bios router open the bios terminal and type show net source rules check the net rules to ensure they are correctly applied from a device in each of the subnet from ISP1, ISP2 and ISP3 interfaces, try accessing the internet to confirm that the net is working as expected. This configuration ensures that traffic from your internal network to ISP1, ISP2 and ISP3 is translated to the public IP address assigned to Ethernet 4 by your ISP. Hello and welcome back. In this section, we will focus on testing the failover in the PFSense firewall. So far, we have configured multiple ISP networks on the BIOS router, simulating it as our ISP network. This network provides three internet connections, ISP1, ISP2 and ISP3. These ISP interfaces have been configured in our PFSense firewall, which manages load balancing and ISP failover. If one ISP goes down, the PFSense firewall automatically switches to ISP2 and then ISP3 based on the tiering configuration we set earlier. In this section, we will set the failover functionality from the PFSense firewall's perspective. To effectively test and verify ISP failover on your PFSense firewall using a Windows PC, follow these best practices. Initially, our ISP1 is primary internet connection. First, open the command prompt and use the tracer command to check the route your internet traffic is taking. For example, type tracert minus d a dot a dot a dot it and press enter. The output should show that traffic is being routed through ISP1. Now simulate the failover. We have to temporarily disconnect ISP1 from the ISP side. And in this training series, our ISP is BIOS router. Right click BIOS router and open the VM settings. Locate the ISP1 interface, connect it to VMNet2 and disconnect it. This simulates ISP1 being down due to technical issues. 
Now go back to your Windows PC. With ISP1 disabled, the failover configured in the PFSense routing gateway should activate. Wait for failover to activate and traffic to switch to ISP2. To verify failover, proceed to test from a LAN side PC. Perform the same test as above. Ensure the output reflects IP address of ISP2. Here it is. The output is showing that traffic is being routed through ISP2. Now repeat the same for ISP2 for successful failover. To disable the ISP2 interface on the BIOS router, right click on the BIOS router and open the VM settings. Locate the ISP2 interface connected to VMNet3 and disconnect it. Press OK. This simulates ISP2 being down due to technical issues. Go back to your Windows PC. With ISP2 is disabled, the failover configured in the PFSense routing gateway should activate. To verify failover, proceed to test from a LAN side PC again. We have already opened the command prompt. Now type the same command tracert d and press enter. Review the output to identify the current gateway being used, which will indicate which ISP3 is active. The PFSense firewall automatically routes traffic through the backup ISP3. Now return to the BIOS router settings and reconnect the ISP1 and ISP2 interfaces to simulate the restoration of their connections. On the BIOS router again, right click, settings, locate the ISP1, connect it to VMNet2 and connect it again. Now locate the ISP2 interface connected to VMNet3 and connect it again. Press OK and go back to your Windows PC. The failover configured in the PFSense routing gateway should activate. To verify failover, test again from a LAN side PC. In the command prompt, type tracer d 8 .8 and press enter. You should now observe that internet traffic is flowing through ISP1. As configured according to the tiers in the PFSense firewall. This is how even if you only have a single internet connection, setting up a BIOS router with a simulated multiple ISP configuration can be incredibly valuable for practicing advanced networking concepts. By creating virtual ISP environment, you can test internet failover, load balancing and dynamic routing strategies. This setup allows you to experiment with real world scenarios such as handling ISP's outage or distributing traffic efficiently across multiple links. It's an excellent way to hone your skills in redundancy, optimization and troubleshooting without needing multiple physical ISPs. Such as configuration can prepare you to tackle corporate network challenges effectively. Alright, that is all for the now. Thank you for watching and I look forward to sharing more of my journey with you all. If you want to see more awesome training content, make sure you click that subscribe button. Click it so you don't miss it. Or if you have any issues or questions, you can reach out to me and I'd be happy to help you out. Thank you.